This is Coogan Cassis for Apple TV in association with Mackin's Jim Marbella. We're in Grays here for an evening with Ricky Hatton, put on by uh, Carl Greaves and Lee Eaton. With me, got a very sharply dressed Ricky Hatton. I try and do my best, not often, but I try and do my best. Maybe you should try a bit more. But I'm Good not to be here in my boxing mates, <laughs> yeah. Carl Greaves, known Carl years. So even back then when he boxed Michael Gomez, I've known Carl, so great to come and spend the evening with him. Yeah. Um, Rick, first thing I want to talk to you about is um, Andy Lee uh, makes the first defence of his world title <coughs> he won um, last year against Matt Carbrough against Peter Quillen tomorrow night. Um, tough ask for, for Andy Lee? Yeah, you know, he's not picked an easy one. You know, I mean, um, Quillen, the former WBO champion, well, he's a former WBO champion, isn't he? Yeah, he vacated the vacated belt that he's belt. fighting back for. That's right, you know, so, um, yeah, tricky fighter, very good, but... Um, Andy Lee hits hard, you know, might have, the, might have the, the experience for him to think, I think, if I'm brutally honest, I think Andy Lee, uh, you move on when you win the world title, <coughs> the confidence it gives you from winning that world title, I think Anthony will, uh, Adam, um, Andy will be an even better fighter from what we've previously seen, if I'm honest, so I think uh, it is a tricky ask, but I think Andy might hit too hard, he's got that solid, lovely right hand duck, Andy, so, um, yeah, I think Andy will come away the winner, yeah, tricky oh. one though. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, Billy Joe Saunders waits in line for the winner. Um, he's in line to face uh, either Andy Lee or Peter Quillin. So, um, I mean, either way, it, it'll be a, a big ask for Billy Joe Saunders as well against Andy Lee or, or Quillen. Well, it is, but you know, there's there's a lot of good matches being made in, in you know in boxing now. You know, there's well a lot of back, you know the best fight has been made, which we'll talk about in, in a minute. I think you know Mayweather and Pacquiao. There's the chance that they could have, we could have Kel Brook and Amir Khan somewhere down the line. We could have, you know, Scott Quigg and Cal Frampton, and Andy Lee and Billy Joe Saunders is another, you know, domestic <coughs> um, fight if you like. So I think we've got some great fights to to look forward to in this country, and that'll certainly be one of them. Billy Joe Saunders, you know, against Eubank Junior, entertaining, you know, <coughs> as entertaining outside the ring as it was in the ring. You know what I mean? So uh, he's paid his dues, Billy. You know, and, and good luck to him. You know, and we always like, you know. Domestic matches, they make it. We make it. They make each other, don't they? You know, look at you know, Carl Fort, George Groves, Nigel Ben, Chris Eubank. You know, so you know, this is another um, another one to look forward to. You and we're, oh, that never happened, did it? <coughs> no, it never <laughs> happened. No, but uh, but no, I, I mean, I, I didn't do bad. I fought pretty much everyone else on the planet, I think. But uh, but no, it's good to see domestic matches made, isn't there? You know, when, when you think, I mean, I fought Eamon McGee, I fought John Faxton, I fought Jason Rowlands, I fought Stephen Smith. Junior was probably the only one who didn't box in the end. Um, talk about domestic matchups. Obviously, Kel Brook uh, was matched up against Frankie Gavin in his second defence of his IBF title. What do you make of that fight, Ricky? <coughs> um, I think Frankie's, you know, um, paid his dues. He's, pro he's proved his worth as a, you know, a good fighter. We all know what Frankie is capable. We all know on the on the day he's capable of beating beating anyone. But it's a fight that you'd probably favour, you know, Kel Brook quite heavily, and I think Kel Brook will be a li little bit too strong for him <coughs> on paper. But if Kel goes into the fight thinking that, then it's um, you know, you know, he, I think Kel has learnt so much from the Carson Jones fight, and since winning the world title going over there, I think the penny has dropped with you know, you know, Kel that he, he takes the game so seriously now. I don't think he would be that, um, I don't think he'd be that silly to take Frankie Gavin lightly. Lightly, you know, there's a reason why Frankie Gavin's fighting for the world title is because he's you know. Because he's ranked and he's you know he's he's worth the shot. Otherwise he won't get it, would he? You know so, uh, and you know this when we're talking about Amir Khan and Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather, which Kel's in the the best division in boxing, he can't afford any slip ups. You know if he if he if he has a slip up against Frankie and takes the fight too lightly, then them fights go miles away, don't they? Two fights you mentioned, uh, <clears throat> Brook and Khan, Quig Frampton seem so far away from being made. Uh, politics, egos, everything stopping these fights from happening. But it's a shame for British <coughs> boxing. It is, you know. I, um, you know, Eddie. You know, the, the thing has been made on the, you know, the, you know, the internet on our film for that matter. You know, that, uh, you know, big offer has been made to, you know, one, one and a half million has been made to Cal Frampton. You know, that's a fantastic person. Eddie has also given him the option to, um, to a 60-40 co-promotion split. I, um, I ain't picking favours because I like Eddie and Matt Room and I like you know just as I like the McGuigans you mm. know and Scott Quigg I mean I'm, I like Cal Frampton a lot of respect for him but I'm man cuing him so I'm in Scott Quigg's corner but I can't I did I saw the interview in iFilm I can't see much wrong with what Eddie's said <laughs> if the truth you know and I mean it's not like I'm favouring Eddie over the McGuigans and, and Frampton because I think the world of 
of them as well. But I think Eddie uh, <coughs> puts a good case forward of why this fight isn't happening, and I think they've got to uh, they've got to come and answer it. I think. Mm. Put Khan a little bit different, obviously. Amir Khan <coughs> has got other options, as you know, he doesn't. It would be a great domestic fight for the pair of them. But I think there's a, re there's a reason why I think the Manny fight and the Floyd Mayweather fight took low, so long in making because after Floyd beat me, he had two years out. And in that time he had out, Manny come and took over the mantle. He became number one contender. So then when they were negotiating, again, not negotiating about three years ago, four years ago, whatever it was, <clears throat> they both were arguing who was the number one pound for pound, you know, and that's why I think it never, you know, took place. Thankfully, it's taking place now. But I think the similar thing, you know, Kel Brook will say, I've got the title, and Amir Khan will say, I'm more established in the last three, four, five years at world level. And they both make a brilliant case. <laughs> so I hope the fight doesn't happen because, you know, because Kel's got the title and Amir thinks he's had more experience and more big fights, if you like, at this stage of his career. So I think, uh, you know, I hope that fight happens and doesn't take as long as the Manny and Mayweather did because it's a very, very similar situation, I think. Absolutely. Now, you've got a book coming out soon uh, from your exploits in Las Vegas. It's very important for people to buy this book because yeah. I'm in the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talking a load of shit. Yeah, well, <laughs> but yeah, it's coming out soon in the next few weeks. And um, it's Ricky Hatton's Vegas Tells. And it's, you know, what could possibly go wrong. And um, if we're talking about the Mayweather fight, the Pacquiao fight, fucking everything. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I had uh, some great times in Las Vegas. You know, I had, uh, you know, three wins, two defeats. Two of the defeats were against the pound for pound best. And. Still to this day, a lot of people come up to me and say, me, the, Vegas, the Mayweather fight was the best fight I've ever been to. The atmosphere was this and that. And there's tales there, you know, about my funny stories, you know, away from the boxing, fans, funny stories, friends, yourself. You know, so I think it's going to be a good read and I think boxing fans will, uh, will like it. You know, you, know, you know, before the fight, the build-up to the fight, the actual fight, after the fight. You know, it's, I think it'll be, uh, I think it, boxing fans will love it. I just noticed what you just said. You listed everyone. You went friends, you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I can't say class. A class was one of them. Uh, a class was one of them friends because you were obviously with the Pacquiao. I think it was the Pacquiao fight. It was the Pacquiao and, fight. Yeah, you know, you you follow me and um, to you know, I was as entertaining out of the ring as I was in the ring. So um, I'm I'm dreading reading what shit you put. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's. Uh, I think boxing fans are gonna gonna love it because so many people have their own t tales to tell about the Las Vegas fights that I had, and I think the majority of them were in there because everyone has been asked their opinion in many ways. And also coming up uh, in June, June the thirteenth, I believe it is uh, the ten year anniversary of your uh, epic win over Costa Zoo. Uh, yeah. What a night that was, 13th Ricky! Of June, Victoria Warehouse in Manchester. It was um, ten years coming up which makes me feel makes me feel quite old when we're talking about all these great fights coming coming forward but uh, no it's um, it would probably go down you know Manchester's had so many great boxing nights um, and that is probably seen as one of the one of the most it's very rare you get a fighter who's two pound for pound number one in the division fighting a Mancunian in Manchester and the fact that nobody thought I could do it made Costa quit on his stool I think uh, most people consider that as um Probably one of Manchester boxing's best nights, if not the best night. So I mean, if I, you know, if ten years coming up, you know, and I'm nothing, uh, you know, I don't shy away from a party, you know. So, you know, I think the fans was my, you know, my sub, if you like that night. You know, the fight was really tough. It was really grueling, and when I, uh, you know, I could feel Costa Zoo sagging, I was sagging myself. But that crowd, you know, brought me, brought me f through. I always have had a strong, you know, uh, bond for the crowd. So if that's Manchester's greatest ever fight or one of the greatest ever occasions in Manchester, we should, uh, I think we should celebrate it. So you've got, a, like I said, a party going on June the 13th at the, the 13th, Man Manchester yeah, Victoria, Victoria Warehouse. Warehouse. You know, and it's going to be, it's going to be massive. You know, I want it to be the best party that Manchester's seen for a good number of years, and I think it probably will. Okay, just finally, Ricky, this boy here to have his first amateur fight next week is Bobby Watson what advice would you give him ahead of his first amateur fight right? <coughs> um, I would say <coughs> excuse me I would say just just keep it um, just keep it simple listen to your trainer 
there's a lot of nerves involved in your first amateur fight and when you hear that crowd roar you know it's easy to play to the crowd and you start getting silly and swinging I think you know and your opponent will be in the same situation I think just keep it simple straight jabs straight right hands don't try and get too adventurous um, because you're both going to be nervous and you know if he comes out winging big hooks because he's nervous you go down the middle you'll get there first I think just keep it simple my mate you taking that on board Bob? yep oh, just don't end up like him <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, Ricky Adam, thank you very much for coming to IFL TV. Uh, enjoy your night no in Essex, and uh, might see you out in Vegas soon. Absolutely. Thank you very much.